Welcome to the Human Conversation Podcast with Jules White, the real dragon slayer. Tune in fortnightly for human conversation about business and sales. Enjoy business expert interviews, educational episodes, and virtual cuppers with entrepreneur business owners. And here is your host, Jules White. So welcome to episode eight of The Human Conversation. And I have got a wonderful guest with me today. And he is, um, well, he's a he for a start because actually a lot of our guests so far have been women. And what I love about this is um, I don't want to just focus purely on women. I actually want some men on this podcast. So I get a male perspective, which I always think might be quite interesting to listen to but he's very aligned with me which is kind of why we're having our human conversation on the podcast today so let me just introduce John Kachurik did I get that right John yes Jules you got it right thank you (laughs) good Good. and he is from success unlimited that's his own business and he's based in Florida so you know just because I'm in the UK it's exciting that I am talking to you across the water John um, and uh, I think what are you five hours behind us I am five hours behind you yes and uh, you know th- this is great because it shows like you know the, the human connection in LinkedIn here we are on opposite sides of the pond and uh, you know we were able to meet up and be aligned in, in what we do and have a great conversation so I'm really looking forward to it thank you yeah it's amazing isn't it and we have as you say we have met on LinkedIn which is brilliant and, and I find LinkedIn is one of my really strong platforms where I make some wonderful connections and also I learn so much. I think that's the big thing for me. I just always learning. I don't know if you feel the same. Yeah. You know what it's like? Uh, LinkedIn has turned into such a great community. Uh, I know you know, like years ago, LinkedIn used to be about finding a job, finding a job, put your resume up there and someone's going to hire you. That's what it yeah. used to always be. Yeah. I said, but now it's such a great community. I learn something every day. Um, something new and even just a fresh perspective, even if it's not learning something new, it's getting a perspective. Like I know a lot of the stuff that you write just, just really kind of, you know, touches my heart. Cause I'm like, wow, like what a, you know, what a different perspective. Cause again, it's, it's, uh, you know, we, we've all had different experiences in life. So it's, uh, it's great to see. Yeah, it is. And, and I think um, you and I have, obviously we've corresponded on LinkedIn. We've said, right, we're going to podcast together. What should we talk about? And it's interesting. We've kind of had a similar journey where we've had that corporate experience and come from corporate then into um, the entrepreneurial space and I thought it'd be really interesting for us to talk about how we kind of got there but equally you know the differences um, and just just general opinion around corporate coming into entrepreneur space because I think some of the listeners may either only just have started a business they may easily have come out of corporate themselves and I think it's about resonating with them and letting them know that actually this is an amazing thing that we've done, John. <laughs> it, it, it is, you know, and, and it, but, but it's such a big step for us um, because, you know, be, becoming an entrepreneur after being in, in corporate and breaking, breaking the mindset of being, you know, a career corporate. And again, whether it's corporate or whether it's just a career mindset is such a, you know, such a big thing to celebrate. I really think, you know, celebrating it is great, but it doesn't come without its challenges, right? Yeah. So, um, mm-hmm. but, you know, I know your journey's, you know, s- similar to mine, we just got tired of, um, you know, being, being restricted on what we can earn, restricted on what we can do. And more importantly, being able to be the person that we are. Cause when you're, right. when you're showing up eight to five every day and you've got to be there, it, it, it becomes, you, you, you do a lot of things and you don't really get to spend a lot of time being the person that you are. I don't know if you agree with that. Oh, totally. Yeah, I do a lot. And I think what's really interesting about me now is I'm working at home, yeah. but even now I will not allow myself to go and do something because it's, it's actually, it's not lunchtime or it's, it's in the nine to five and it's, it feels naughty to kind of go and do something that isn't work. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you know, it is. And there, there's times I do that too. There's times like I have to rush around and be like, oh, it's almost eight o'clock. But, you know, I remember that, you know, the flexibility, like it's funny. Uh, a lot of people joke with me because Sunday night uh, here is like a big night where they, people get tons of email because I work usually, you know, late afternoon, Sunday into the evening, into the night so that I can take time off on Monday. So, um, one thing that I found on my journey is that I don't make Monday such a, such a big thing for me anymore. You know, like I don't make like, you know how, when you're, when you're got the career job, it's like, Oh, Monday, everybody hates Monday. It's like Monday to me. I love Mondays. Cause I yeah. pretty much, I, you know, I work from home and I don't start until late. 
you know, I do a couple of things, but I do a lot of stuff on Sunday because I have the flexibility that I can do a lot of my work on a Sunday night, you know, when really there's nothing that you think about. There's not much going on on a Sunday night usually, but I can get a lot done. So again, that's that mind sh mindset shift where um, it's okay to work in odd times and you don't have to do that, you know, eight to five every day. Right? Yeah. It's, it's, and mindset's the huge thing, isn't it? You know, it is. isn't that kind of, the biggie here, that shift is, is an awful lot to do with what we tell ourselves is okay and, and what we allow ourselves to choose. You know, I'm quite a big, on, a big person on we have a choice. It's kind mm -hmm. of one of my things, you know. Um, and it's a big statement to make because often we don't think we have because of whatever circumstances, but, you know. Yeah, and, 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 I, and I would agree. I mean, a lot of, you know, we, we have a choice. And I think, you know, what differentiates a lot of entrepreneurs um, is that we're willing to take the action on those choices, right? I mean, you think about us as individuals, we all have choices, right? And even, even people I work with, everybody have choices that, that, you know, but we have to make that choice to take action on those things that are out there. And, you know, the most successful, you know, entrepreneurs, the ones that can willing to make that mindset shift are the ones who are willing to take that action. That's actually something I'll be writing about. I'll probably do a video later <laughs> on that because yeah. that's actually one of my, it's funny, I have it on my list here, things that I really wanted to, to talk about because I've seen a lot of that over the last week or two with a lot of people I've been meeting with is that, you know, there's a great plan out there for everybody. And the question is, you know, what's that thing that you need to do to get over that hump to make yeah. that change, right? Because yeah. we all kind of, is it fear? I don't know. What do, what do you think? Is it fear? Is, oh. it, is it just, you know? I, I mean, from a woman's perspective, um, I absolutely think fear is huge for us. We fear far more in terms of well, what people are going to think about us. What if it fails? What if people don't like us? What if they're not going to pay the prices that I want to charge? And funnily enough, obviously as a sales coach, and mm -hmm. you know, I mean really it's business as much as sales because I think the two are the same, John. But really, I lead with this sales thing because I know this is where the big fear is, you know, um, and it is, it's all self-sabotage, to be quite honest with it you. It is. It's judgment, right? It's like, oh, you know, like we live, I mean, all of us live with judgment. Some do it better than others. But um, I think that, I, and you, so from a sales perspective, do you, do you think that the better, the best salespeople are, are less worried about being judged? I've always kind of wondered that. <laughs> I think for me that the sales piece is about really understanding what sales means. I think once you really get to grips with what it really is, because it's been labeled, it's been put in a box and it's been made this dirty word because we've experienced pushy salespeople, <laughs> you know, and they, they, you know, there's yep. really bad experiences. And, yes. and so people put that in a box and they say, that's what sales is. Well, sales isn't that it's about a relationship. It's about communication mm -hmm. um, and it's about that human conversation, funnily enough, um, which is probably where the name for my podcast right. comes from. But, <laughs> yeah. um, so I think that it's not about sort of actions as much as it's that understanding about being you, which mm -hmm. is kind of our thing, isn't it? Yep, Just being it is. you and understand what your why is and what the ideal client's why is. And when those two connect then you're just actually having a human conversation. Exactly. And you know what? And, and I think, I think the thing to remember is that not everyone's going to connect with that. Right. And exactly. you know, we have to be willing, you know, and, and that's a lot of what we coach our, our clients. So, you know, a lot of people are, are, you know, that aren't the right people aren't going to be, aren't going to connect with that. And that's okay. Let them go and do their thing. There's going to be people out there that are going to connect with you. And it's yeah. a matter of just being patient, being consistent and being committed. And they're my big words, you know, consistent and committed. Yeah. When you're consistent and committed, it might take you three years, but you know what, you're going to find the right people yeah. that want your product, that know, like, trust you, that just love what you do. And you know what, they're going to bring you so much business, <laughs> right? You've seen it, I'm sure. Oh gosh. Yeah. And the thing is, it's that, as I call it, the ripple effect, you know, um, yep. it's not just actually, um, how you deal with them in that first instance it's then the fact that they'll go and tell everyone how great you are then they'll mm -hmm. recommend you to other people and the ones yep. who don't get you who just want a quick purchase mm -hmm. for the wrong <laughs> reasons they yep. won't come back again and that you know yep. they they won't do you any good really so it's much better to play it as a long game i think in, in it, it is you know and and, and I, I i a little bit of content i did last week has had to do with you know a lot of times i go to places and it's just i, I see so many people just selling 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 there it's leads not referrals and you know you walk in and it's all hey you want to buy my lotion potion my magic this my that i'm like oh like you know what, what happened to the relationship like what happened to the to the connection yeah. or we can sit down and be like you know maybe i'll buy a product from you down the road i said but i just want to know who you are and yeah. uh 
yeah, yeah. so it's so true I don't think I could have said it any better no um, and so John you know you the work you do um, having had your own experience coming sort of from corporate to the entrepreneurial space do you find the people you work with have had that same journey I, I'd say that the people that I like to work with uh, have, you know, so, so again, you know, we talk about who's our ideal client, who are the ones that we, you know, like working with, who are the ones who appreciate who we are. I think they're the ones who have been on the same journey um, as, as uh, me. Like, I mean, I've had some clients that have been a little bit outside of my ideal client. You know what I've, you know, we've, we've parted ways just because we haven't seen the same, uh, you know, we haven't seen it, things quite the same as we, as we could have. But yeah, a lot of it is, is people that are either former corporate uh, employees, people who need structure. Again, so you know, so we do business coaching and consulting. So um, a lot of corporate career people like the structure. Again, we talked about the eight to five, right? Even though it's not eight to five, it's still having some level of structure and accountability. And yeah. we find that that's the thing we coach most on is accountability because because you probably know as an entrepreneur, as I do, it's very easy for us to get up in the morning and be like, you know what? I don't feel like doing anything today. Right. <laughs> it's very easy to do that. Right. Yeah. So, you know, so having, you know, so being being uh, having to be accountable to some degree as an entrepreneur is some of the structure that we provide as well as the goal setting and as well as the. You know, like a lot of times I'll walk in and I'll, I'll meet with people and be like, yeah, you know what? You realize we're six, we're, all, we're halfway through 2018 already. We are like, yeah. what? A lot of times, it, you know, some business owners are so um, in their business instead of working on their business that they don't even realize that half the year is over. It's like, so you should be, you know, halfway through your goals for the year. Holy cow. I'm not that, you know, so, uh, you know, people need the structure. And I think that, you know, they're the people that I like to work with, people who need structure. They crave accountability. You know, they're willing to take that action. And I think that, I, and I really think that's a strength of the career people. Like, I think sometimes I get feedback that, um, you know, I seem hard on people who are in corporate. And it's not, it's not that I'm hard on it. I just think that there's so much better out there for people um, than that, because that structure is what we need, you know, being able yeah. to get up and be there and be accountable mm -hmm. and, you know, be willing to make a difference in the world. That's, they're the best entrepreneurs and they're the people that I personally like working with. Yeah. Yeah, and, I, and I totally agree and of course that structure comes from the corporate world doesn't it really it's sort of in it's bred into us and so it is a comfortable place but I think it's understanding that you can make the structure your structure so yes. even even though like you're right in saying that actually I think all of us need some sort of structure in order to kind of go forward and actually meet a goal but we can make the structure ours you said I may work on a Sunday but then I can take Monday off well, that's still a structure, mm -hmm. but it you've is. decided on that structure. And you've exactly decided. right. Yep. And I think it's about empowering um, the people we coach to know that that's okay. Um, yes. But then they still got that structure. Yes. And, and I think the, you know, so, so I'll tell you just a funny story if you, if you don't mind. So yeah. when I first made the, you know, we talk about structure and having to break and shift the mindset. So when I first left my corporate job and I was like, okay, I'm done with that. You know, the hardest mindset shift I think I had was realizing I wasn't getting a paycheck every two weeks. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, you know, you think about it, you know, I mean, you know, early 40s. So, I mean, I've been getting a paycheck every other week for 25, 30 years. Right? So yeah. suddenly it's just like, you know, so now I had to come up with a new structure as which that, you know, so how am I going to compensate? How am I going to compensate my, like, how is this going to happen? It felt very unnatural to not have that direct deposit every two weeks coming <laughs> yeah. in. And, you know, not that it's a, you know, not that it's a bad thing, but again, that's the type of thing that, um, you know, you could build your own structure around, but I, I will tell you the first month um, was, was challenging because yeah. it was just like, yeah, I was still seeing money, but it was just wasn't coming in the same way, you know, it was, it, it was yeah. different. So that, that's one of those mindset shifts that, that just, I, I love sharing that. It's just like, you know, you think about the fundamental thing. It's like, wow. <laughs> yeah. And it is, it, it is so fundamental and it will be to everybody because unfortunately money is the currency we have to have to live by really, isn't right. it? You know, and like you, I've worked since I was 16. You know, I've worked all of those years having mm -hmm. that regular monthly paycheck. Um, and then all of a sudden, yeah, um, now actually it's up to me to pay myself my paycheck. Right. <laughs> so, we yeah. have to be accountable to do that, right? Yeah, we <laughs> sure do. <laughs> we sure do. But you see, it's a balance, isn't it? It's a balance of making sure that you have got the money to live, mm -hmm. but also doing the work that feeds your soul. Because, yes. you know, for me, why did I want to have my own business again? Well, because I just wanted to feel like I loved what I did, mm -hmm. you know, wholeheartedly yeah. loved what I did. 
It is. You know, a lot of times we, 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 we feel unf unfulfilled even when we're really, really, really good at something. Like, um, like I always joke around that, you know, even if I was the best, you know, accountant in the world and I like I was the best, best, best in the world, eventually I'm going to get burned out from that. Right. Because I'm just doing it all the time. And I'm really have that unfulfilled piece that it's not about doing the taxes or doing accounting for people. It's about being and helping people. And really, that's what we all are looking for. You know, and, and even even in career, uh, we, we get that unfulfilled feeling. And you found it in what you're doing. I find it in what I'm doing. I feel fulfilled. Yeah. And, and that's really what it's about. And, you know, everything else will fall into place. But that's what the most important thing is, is just feeling fulfilled and knowing we're part of something bigger. And I, and I also believe that, you know, visibility, consistency, um, being true me and going out into the world, I have met my clients. And it's almost mm -hmm. been this completely natural meeting of minds. So I'm doing the work I love with the ideal client mm -hmm. without it feeling like it was a real chore to get that business. Yep. yep. And I know that sounds a bit fairy tale, but I truly believe that if you really get do that work, that groundwork. You know, if you're entering that entrepreneurial space now and thinking about doing it, do this groundwork mm -hmm. and get that message right and know your why and yes. the answer to your client. And then, and then everything else comes from that, doesn't it? Do you think, John? It, it does. I, th I think everything falls into place. Again, it's, it's being patient and being committed because, you know, it, it's like anything. It doesn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, 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 you know, I, I always talk about a flywheel and it's just, it's a matter of, you know, you start the flywheel real slow. You, you got to push really, really hard to get that thing going and it doesn't go very fast, but then, you know, suddenly it starts to move a little fat, a little less effort and it starts rolling on its own a little more, a little less effort and it starts going on its own. And it's just being consistent and being and continuing to push that flywheel is just a critical part of our own success and be hanging in there. Right. Yeah. Just hanging in there and knowing yeah. that it's going to, it's going to come too many people try to rush it and they, they end up being miserable about it. And uh, you know, that's, that, that's not a, not a, not a recipe for success. So just being consistent, like you said, it's just, it happens. It will happen. Yeah. For us. It will. And I think when you start to get the, to the point where it makes you miserable, just actually go and get yourself a job again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. You can easily go get a job and be miserable. Yeah. <laughs> me, it doesn't yeah. take much. Right. <laughs> so, so just, I just want to touch on, um, the work you do with your um, clients, what's that kind of one thing that you find that they really, really need from you? I know you talked about accountability. Is there anything else that is like that core thing that you know you can really, really change their game with? Well, I, I think some of it is being a sounding board for, um, you know, for, for the business owner. Because a lot of times we, um, as business owners, we spend a lot of time alone, sitting in a room, thinking about ideas. And with that, like I said, we said earlier, there's a lot of fear that comes along with that. It's fear of taking that next step. It's fear of judgment. It's fear of, well, what if? And, you know, a, a lot of times, just the time that we spend with entrepreneurs is really talking more about our, the opportunities and realizing that fear is really that opportunity in disguise. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if we're not willing to accept fear for what it is and know that crossing that fear is going to be the thing that's going to push us to the next level um, is, is really how, how we can be successful. And, uh, you know, we, I find that that's a, that's a trend that all clients that I work with have and even myself included. I mean, we all deal with fear, like we said, um, but it's being able to, to help identify those opportunities and know and lay them out. And that's what we do. We lay it out on a whiteboard and we say, here's everything. It's all in front of us. We just have to get over that fear of taking action and yeah. you know we can get that past that fear of taking action and knowing that yeah it's scary to step outside the bounds right and a lot of a lot of my clients and a lot of people i meet are like oh john you're the reality guy you know you're you know we, it's hard to meet with you because you're reality i'm like yeah but we have to live in reality yeah. and realize that you know if we don't face the things that we need to be doing in life and we don't take those chances we're never going to grow i said we can yeah. sit within our own bounds and just do uh what we know how to do i said or we can push ourselves a little bit past where we're at and we can really, really make that difference. So again, a lot of it's that, and then also, you know, productivity and spending time wisely, you know, so I'll, I'll kind of say the second, the second kind of thing I see with a lot of entrepreneurs, especially in the States is uh, time management and productivity management that, you know, a lot of people spend a lot of time on the, what we call the $10 an hour work, which is spinning your wheels on things that you probably don't need to be doing. Mm -hmm. And that by involving the right people in your business and by knowing what you're good at, knowing what you gives you energy, and shifting the things that you're not good at and you don't have it, don't give you energy, um, you know, you really can be more productive and go out and be the great person that you are. So a lot of times we do, we, we spend 
especially networking. So the biggest topic I always have with people, people think they have to be out networking seven days a week and you know, a hundred hours a month. It's like, it's crazy. It's like, but it's, but if you're not using networking effectively, going in there and, and realizing, Hey, I want to meet two people or, Hey, I want to build, you know, find two business partners. You're just going there just for the sake of networking to say that I'm networking. Yeah. That's not really good productive time, is it? It's yeah. really, you're going out. If you're going to have lunch with people, then say you're going to have lunch with people, you know, don't yeah. say you're networking because you're not getting anything out. You're not building <laughs> anything out of it. So again, a lot of it's just understanding, you know, productivity versus just spending time on things. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, so two things that I tend, I tend to see a lot are, uh, are those two things. That's really interesting, actually, the whole productivity part of it. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, we're all guilty of it, aren't we? But I think yeah. with me, I've, I suppose I've decided that, um, you know, with my productivity, which I'm not great at, I'll be honest, I'll hold my hands up. But <laughs> I'm, what I'm trying to do is kind of um, look at my, what I call routes to market. So what are all the different things that I'm doing? Instead of sort of doing too much of one thing, you know, I, I'm obviously where my ideal clients are hanging out. You know, I just right. make, that, make that one clear. I'm not just going anywhere, but I'm just looking at places where my ideal clients hang out, but making sure that I'm on those different platforms. I'm doing my podcast. Mm -hmm. I've written a book, you know, so I'm, I'm you know, it, it's great. And I'm trying to do a lot of things at once, but I think all of those things will actually complement each other, which they is why do I'm it. doing them, you know. They do it, you know, and, and, and that's, and that's amazing that you that you focus on that. So I, I, use, I use that term a lot where I say, Hey, you have to find out where your ideal clients are. Right. You know, it's like a lot of people are like, well, you know, I'm looking to meet, I'm, I'm looking to meet attorneys or great referral firms and then go find out where attorneys hang out. I said, go to, go to bar associations, go to restaurants where I said, you got to go where your clients are, or you're not going to find them. Right. And I thought that's, that's brilliant that you're, that you've, uh, you've got that. <laughs> and you're yeah. chasing, right? well that there's also the whole ideal client conversation, which is probably another one that we need to do at some sure. point, John. Um, but, you know, I tend to focus with the ideal client on not necessarily what their job title is, but actually what's the pain, you know? So I'm looking at real niche of pain. What is it that they really, really struggle with, which is how I then came to that sales thing. Cause that right. was that one thing that was always coming up. I resonate with probably more of a female audience, mm -hmm. although I love men. Um, which is why you're here, John. Yes, um, thank you. But, um, yeah, because I like that different perspective. But yeah. the point is that my ideal client is most definitely female entrepreneur who has fear around sales. You know, so it's it's really that kind of pain piece that makes my ideal client. If yep. that makes sense. It is. It's always about the pain. It's like everybody's got pain in different ways, and uh, and that's great. You've, you've got a you you you've got it, man. You're solid. <laughs> <That's different>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So I guess a um, couple of things before we, we go, because we've, we've already chatted for such a long time and it's yes. great. I could talk to you for hours, John. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> it's I love it. such a lot in common. Um, I'd like to know what your why is, because I like to ask people that. You know, have, have you okay. really thought about what your why is? Yeah, so, so my why is, and you, know, you can see it if you, if you follow me at all on LinkedIn, my, my why is I want to make the world a better place. And, you know, anything that I can do to contribute to make the world a better place through other people, through inspiring other people, through helping other people, um, that's, to me, the why. Because, you know, we're not, we're not in this world alone. We need each other. And the only way we're going we're gonna to make the world a better place is to do it together. And um, it's just, that's what I'm about. And that's why I love these types of, of, of podcasts. I love being on the phone. I love being on LinkedIn because, you know, we really can make that connection and know that. This is what we all want, right? We all want the world to be a better place, and yeah. just knowing that that it, it it is a better place already, but it's going to even be, even be a better place as we all continue to connect and continue to just just make a difference in what we do. Definitely, and you see, I want to go deeper because I want to know, um, right. why is that our why? Because my why is very similar. I want to help people now to fall in love with sales. So, but mm -hmm. why is that my why? Is it down to the fact that? I had this journey where I saw what it looked like in that corporate space and I was stifled and I was held back and I saw people doing it not quite how I thought it could be done. Is that really my why? That, that, that now I want to sort of give people, I don't know, uh, just a new way of thinking about it. Right. And, and, you know, and, and that's what, that's, what's made I mean, in the end, it's all about just helping people and it's really that, you know, that acceptance. And that's what I think is amazing about your why. It's just, that it, again, it's about people. And when we make it about people in whatever capacity, 
it's just that's what makes the difference. <laughs> it really yeah. is. I'm just such a people. It's just yeah. it's just amazing. It really is. It is, isn't it? It is. It's kind of yeah. It's not actually about sales at all. It's about people. Let's face it. it. <laughs> totally, totally. It's like me. It's like it's not about you know. It's not about uh. It's not about business necessarily. It's about the people because right because people live their lives through their business and yeah. you know we can help people with their business when you can help people with their sales. You're impacting their life, yeah. right? And you think yeah. about it, and, that, and that's really what it comes down to and why I get passion and it's, you know, my, my profession is so rewarding and your profession is so rewarding because we truly are helping people's lives through the components that they see the value in. And it's just, it's amazing. It's really it's amazing. I journey. think, and I think it works the other way even because when you do the mindset stuff on that personal development around mm-hmm. life issues and thoughts, mm-hmm. it makes their businesses better. So it's it even does. like, it even works the other way around, doesn't it? So. It does. It does. And so I'm saying it all, every, everything kind of goes around and it's all cyclical and, and it's, uh, and, and it's amazing when you're with the right people that understand that. And again, we talk about the ideal clients, not everybody understands that, right? No. So you, you and I are on the journey to find people who understand that and want that and realize yeah. that people are the best asset we have, whether, you know, whatever capacity it is that the more time we can spend with other people, helping us building that community, um, you know, the more successful we're going to be because we get that mindset, sh- mindset shift. I mean, just yeah. in this conversation, you and I, you've shifted my mindset a little bit like, wow, it's uh, <laughs> kind of, kind of amazing, you know? So it's like, that's just what that human connection is all about. Really. Well, that one's for free, John. And obviously, well, <laughs> and, and okay. obviously, you know, yours is for free that you've given right. me your time on my podcast. Which right. Is well, well, well I, I had to get up early. So there was a little bit of a cost there. Oh, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So look, I, w- I want to make sure I put all your links, obviously, um, with the podcast, which I will do. But where's the best place for people to find out a bit more about John if they want to know? So, so the first place, of course, is my LinkedIn profile. We met on LinkedIn, so you can yeah. find me on LinkedIn. Uh, it's John, J-O-H-N, last name, Kachurik, K-A-C-H-U-R-I-C-K. Do a search for me on LinkedIn. You'll find me. I'm, I'm fairly accessible. Um, the second best place is to check out my website, um, and that is at Get successunlimited.com uh, on there you can read a little bit more about how we help entrepreneurs how um, our program the pinnacle success system is a four pillar approach to entrepreneurial success and uh, how we use that and base all of our programs around the four pillars of the pinnacle success system uh, um, you know we're local here in tampa but we're growing i've got associate coats uh, uh, and a new associate coach coming on pedal penny cook she's actually out training i want to be in denver colorado later this week uh, with her. Um, so, you know, so we're growing and uh, you can learn more about our program and what we do down here in Florida. Um, just at my website, get success connect with me on LinkedIn, share my content. Um, again, it's how Jules and I caught up. So, you yeah. know, LinkedIn works. It really does. <laughs> it does. It really does. And that's amazing. So I want you to leave us with one last top tip for the new entrepreneurs or people coming out of corporate into entrepreneur top tip, John. On so the, the top, top, right. So the top tip is, have a plan and a strategy and follow it. And, you know, a lot of times we'll go into business and we think we have it figured out, but sit with somebody and vet the plan out with somebody else and understand what the steps are that you need to be successful and then be committed and be consistent, right? So plan, strategy, be consistent and be committed. That's Stop it. Gives you Perfect. success Perfect. all the time. Perfect. And be Thank yourself. You. Yeah, oh, be yeah, yourself. totally, totally. <laughs> be yourself. Be, be you. yourself. Be you. Yes. And have a human conversation. Yes. <laughs> They're awesome. Love. They are. <laughs> Okay, well, look, thank you so much for your time. Um, if you're listening into this, I hope you've loved it as much as I did, and I hope John enjoyed it too. I did. Um, it's very much about having a very natural human conversation. None of this is really planned. That's why I love my podcast, because we just chat. And I think there's a lot come out of that for me, um, and I will listen to it back, as I always do. But I hope anyone listening has loved it. Don't forget that my live it, love it, sell it methodology, my workshops, they're all out there. I'm I'm touring the UK at the moment, John, on a sales road trip. Nice. So um, I'm, it's a wonderful half day workshop where I really help people to see exactly what sales is all about, as wow. I mentioned earlier. So it's super, super good. Um, so check in, see where we're at, see what town we're in. And one day, you never know, I might come to America, eh? There you go. And I might come to the UK too. So, oh, you know, we're yeah. going to have to, you know, we're going to have to, well, well, we'll cross paths. Trust me, you know, good yeah. people cross each other's paths at some point in life. So it'll happen. <laughs> I think so. Thank it you will. so, so much, John. You're it's welcome. lovely, lovely chatting to you. And thank you for listening, everybody. We will see you for episode nine very, very soon. Ta-da for now. 
You've just been listening to the Human Conversation Podcast with Jules White. If you enjoyed the show, please let her know on our Facebook page, www.facebook.com forward slash Compassio Coaching. 